23 of temperatures below freezing. In fact, 105 hours now in Tulsa, consecutive hours below freezing. So when we get into Saturday, Sunday, and Monday, we have that second surge of colder air that's going to be arriving. There's a couple of storm systems as well. We are looking at two storm systems that could bring in some snow once again, but this time it's looking like potentially more snow to the area. In the negatives over the weekend and then throughout the week. So what we're doing right now is we're in a mad scramble. I'm preparing for a severe winter storm. This is one that we don't want to mess around with. What's up? This is Josh here at Porter Valley Ranch, and we are currently sitting below 20 degrees here at our farm. This doesn't happen very often. Uh, the guy on TV, the meteorologist, said it is a Siberian blast, which only happens about every 50 years. So naturally, when it is this cold, somebody is going to have a baby. And today, held true to form, and we had a baby lamb. And here is our new little Harlequin lamb. She's a girl. She was born sometime in the night because when we came up here, she was already all dry and which is a miracle in itself. We really thought that uh, she would have frozen when it's that cold, but the mom did a good job. She is a, she's a little nervous right now. She's not real gentle yet. So Rachel came up earlier and put a sweater on the lamb because that's what we do. Also, <laughs> she needed a little bit of extra warmth. So it is crazy cold. Um, it usually doesn't get this cold. We were really nervous, but honestly, these sheep are pretty used to it. Um, you know, sheep are in the mountains. They can be born in the snow and they're really hardy. Um, so nature is kind of taking care of itself, but every time Rachel comes up here, she gets the little lamb, which, do we have a name yet for the lamb? Lovey. We're going to name it Lovey because it's almost Valentine's Day. And also we have hope, joy, and love. So, but the greatest of these, ha <laughs> ha, just a little preacher joke. If you guys watch our channel, you know that my dad's a preacher and my grandpa's a preacher. So you got to throw in a preacher joke because preacher jokes are even worse than dad jokes. <laughs> Anyways, so little Lovey, every time Rachel comes up, she just kind of holds her and she starts warming Warms up her. and she she goes to sleep yeah so um she's okay but she would much rather have the warmth of someone holding her and I think she needs a diaper and a bottle <laughs> is what i keep pushing for rachel really wants to bring her inside and i keep saying that's not a great idea but if it gets much colder which it is supposed to get down below zero then we might have to take some other measures um you'll see over here we have a heater in the corner. It's an infrared heater. We put a grate in front of it so they don't knock it over. We have a heat lamp right here. Um, but if you are going to use any sort of heating devices in your barn, you need to be really careful. Uh, my family actually experienced a fire in a barn whenever I was a child and it killed some of our cows and burned down the barn. Um, I was pretty young, but it was a pretty traumatic experience. So we are very aware of those things and very careful. Make sure that your extension cords are, you know, properly secured and don't do it unless you need to. But this is a uh, situation where we definitely need to because it is it is crazy cold and it's just going to get colder. So we are uh, trying our best to to keep this little guy warm. And we'll keep an eye on it to make sure that it stays warm enough and make sure it stays hydrated and fed. And if we need to, then we will step in and intervene. But it's always best to let nature take its course if possible. Okay, so we originally got some baby doll sheep in September, early September. That kind of got us in the sheep game. Our middle son really wanted something he could cuddle because as you know, we raise Ibex and they're a little exotic and a little athletic and just a little too much for us to go out and just love on them. And he is the cuddler of the family. So if you watch our baby doll video, you'll see us going with them and bringing them home. Once we got into the sheet game, we just really, really started liking it. And 
we started looking at different sheep. What we love about them is their approachable nature. We love how calm they are. They don't demand your attention, but they appreciate it. Uh, you can feed them. You can just sit in the middle of the pen and let them just feed them. They'll come right up to you, but they don't bother you for attention. So that's something that we've really, really appreciated um, with their nature. But we were looking for some more baby doll sheep, actually, and they're very hard to find. We definitely wanted something that would be old enough to have babies this spring. And they can't have babies their first year. So we knew we were looking for a yearling. And in our research, we found Jill Christopher in Texas who has both baby dolls and harlequins. And she really started educating us on the, on the breed. So we were very intrigued. <laughs> And we went down to check them out in Texas. We've got a video on that also. And we decided to go ahead and, with our little herd, start some harlequins here. Harlequins and baby dolls can be bred together to keep them in the harlequin family. So they do complement each other. They all get along very well together. So if you do want to keep them separate whenever you're breeding and you want to just have baby dolls and just have harlequins, you can but they also all go together well too. And if you are to breed a Harlequin with a baby doll, you would still produce an, a Harlequin. So what we did was we went ahead and took home Lizzie, Lizette right here, and Jenny, who is Eugenia, and they were two moms and we didn't know they were pregnant at the time. So around December uh, 20 something, we saw Jenny have her baby and we actually were able to capture that one on camera. So if you go back and watch that video, it's fascinating. Now this time we didn't have that opportunity, but we walked up, we walked up and found her. And of course it was even colder than it was the night that we had the other two. As a breeder, what you're looking to start your herd with when you're doing Harlequin is something that's rather high on the gen code and then also a preference thing, which would be spots. The spotted ones are definitely a little gonna sell for more. A blue eye is gonna sell for more. Lizzie has a partial blue eye and I'm pretty sure this little lovey does too. Um, but it's she's so little right now. But I'm pretty sure she looks like her mom. So. Paul is another another ram we brought home that Lizzie will breed with next year and they both have partial blue eyes so the chances of getting blue eyed babies from them will be awesome. Something that Jill told us to trust her about and we did was that Lizzie right here who is totally white, no black whatsoever, can throw a baby with these colors, right? That was like fascinating to us. She's still a Harlequin. She's an FP. She just doesn't have any spots. Then Jenny, who we also got with her, is primarily um, black, which actually is a brown color. So she threw a baby that looks exactly like this one named Hope. And then she, the twin's name that's Joy looks like her almost exactly. She's got a blonde wig. She's got some or she's got some white on her legs. So all of the markings are the same. So with both of these U's right here that were pretty much a solid color, they still have spotted babies. So right now we came up, we're about to finish um, checking on her for the next couple hours. She's doing good. She always falls asleep when she gets warm and comfortable. I think that's why she gets to go inside at night. But it is about 25 degrees out here. So we're gonna keep watching the weather. If it drops below 20, we'll definitely have to change our precautions.
Right after birth, what you want to do, especially in these harsh conditions, is make sure that the baby has some vitamins and nutrients that it needs. Uh, we have been watching and she's been nursing a little bit, so that's good. Uh, we saw her go to the bathroom earlier, so that means that she's getting hydrated. But we're going to give her some of this Nutrigent, Nutridrench. Uh, you've heard us talk about Power Punch. Some Power Punch is only for goats because it has copper in it. So make sure that whatever uh, supplement you're using, make sure that it's for sheep. Uh, it says that it's safe for sheep because if it has any sort of iodine or copper that it's not gonna be good for them. So we're gonna go ahead and give the new baby with yep. two squirts of this just to kind of help it have some vitamins. And you want to push it in really slow because if you go too fast, it could asphyxiate, which is a nice word for drowned. And we definitely don't want that to happen today. <clears throat> there you go. Okay. All right, the next thing we're gonna do is we're gonna put some of these vitamins and electrolytes. It's kind of like Gatorade. We're gonna put some of that in, in the mom's water just to make sure that she stays hydrated, gives her a little bit of extra vitamins and minerals. Uh, again, it's really cold, so they're gonna be eating a lot of hay and probably not a lot of grain just to stay warm. They're a ruminant animal, which means they generate heat from within by eating hay. So we're gonna put this in our water just a little bit. If you put too much, they won't drink it. And so just put a little bit in there uh, every day for the next probably week or so. We'll probably do that for her just to make sure she's taken care of. Okay. All right, so shortly after birth, one thing you're gonna to wanna to do is uh, go ahead and clip the umbilical cord a little closer to their body. Uh, when it's hanging down, it is still you know attached to them. It still can wick bacteria and things up into them. So what we do is just cut it off about maybe an inch from their body and then dip it in iodine. That helps clean it and it just helps keep them a little bit cleaner and more sanitary so they don't pick up anything. Especially since it's this cold, we're not used to having any animals in this cold of weather. So we don't know if that would cause problems or not, but it could. So we're just gonna go ahead and take care of that. It's all gummy. So we got it shorter. Uh, it could probably come back and cut it off even a little bit more. Uh, it'll start kind of drying and withering up. Some people leave them alone. They just kind of hang down and eventually they'll fall off. But uh, we've had some, some good advice from people who have done this longer than us that it's best just to go ahead and cut that off. Um, you guys can see she is still pretty cold. Rachel's been holding her and uh, trying to keep her warm, but it's kind of making the, the mom here nervous. Again, these are not super gentle. Uh, we haven't had them very long, just for a couple months. We didn't raise them by hand and they're not really used to people. So we don't want to disrupt them too much. Um, when we came up this morning and found them, we were pretty nervous because we honestly didn't know if she would be able to have them on her own in this, this cold of weather. Luckily, today it is in the 20s, the low 20s, but within a couple days from now, we're supposed to be hitting single digits and the wind chill is even going to be down in like the negative 10s or 20s. So. We're glad that she was born when she was born because it could have been much worse. So we've got a lot of heaters and lights in here, which is its own different video. You gotta be really careful putting any kind of uh, electricity in barns. So we're gonna make sure we're really careful with all that stuff, but we're gonna keep them in here where it's warm, uh, where they can eat and bond. Uh, we don't wanna get in the way of their bonding and uh, we will check back in on them here in just a little bit.